Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a weekend. Hey, baby, how you doing? I am fantastic. How are you today? Oh, doing really good. Uh, yeah, I'm always been you know kind of fascinated with history, so this is just fascinating to me. In Cyprus, a 2,500 year old coffin was found with painted scenes from Homer's epics. I didn't even know the Simpsons were that old. <laughs> oh, not that Homer. Not that Homer. I know. I'm just being silly. Uh, but that's really kind of cool from 2,500 years ago. And take a listen to this. Builders uh, use a measurement called an R value. It's the amount of resistance to heat offered by a material, and it's useful in calculating the insulation. For example, wood siding has an R value of 0.8. So if you ever hear something called an R value, that that's like uh, how much heat or coldness can come through the wall i see so if you ever have you ever heard our values before i believe so but i have no well, clue what they mean now you know a little bit more than you knew before <laughs> we got really. some <laughs> special well you should have paid attention we got some special stuff coming your way in a moment i will tell you what's happening this weekend a lot of fun stuff on the way and we'll tell you all about it on the john and heidi show john and heidi. today is a special day heidi do you know what today is what is today john well i'm going to tell you about the whole darn weekend saturday july 9th is bald is in day really charlie's in luck <laughs> it's also body painting day it is carver day it's grange day and it's martyrdom of the bab day okay so oh, saturday's a, whole a bunch of day. stupid days well it's a lot of stuff i don't quite understand right sunday july the 10th is Clarahue Day. Again, I it is no don't clue. step on a bee day. <laughs> if you're barefoot, don't wow. do that any day. Sunday is Pina Colada Day and Teddy Bear's Picnic Day. <laughs> okay, Pina Coladas I could it's handle. A, of all the ones that I thought you would get, that would be the one you're going <laughs> to celebrate. It's like I'm doing that Saturday and Sunday. We're set. All right, get out there and celebrate this weekend and have some fun doing it. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Whether you're an experienced shooter or someone new to self-defense, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute has a course for you. You may recognize Front Sight from their reality TV show filmed at this private range 45 minutes west of Las Vegas. A Diamond Lifetime membership is $15,000, but we have a special price of just $3,000 available now only at radiosavings.com. This lifetime membership allows you to take over 50 courses as often as you'd like at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. Get this deal right now at radiosavings.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. No word on whether they're still doing this or not. But in 2000, students at William Woods University could not only get scholarships for playing football, but they could get scholarships or at least get paid for watching football. <laughs> the school, this is in Fulton, Missouri, was concerned about their students' lack of school spirit. So they offered financial incentives for students to wow. show up at the and participate in school functions Students who had contracted to attend school functions received a $5,000 year Holy tuition cow. break. Holy cow! Are yeah. you kidding? Under the program, students earned spirit points for attending sporting events, taking in art exhibits, or even serving on a student government board. According to the Dean of Admissions at Williams Woods University, the program was in response to rising student apathy. <clears throat> so... When you were a kid, did you go to the school football games and that kind of stuff? Was that your that yeah. wasn't your kind of thing? Was no, it? you barely went to school. I barely went to school. <laughs> I can't, can't imagine Heidi. Hanging and out I would of this. sneak out the window during the pep rallies. <laughs> what? My friends and I. <laughs> we wouldn't even go to the pep rallies. Why would you sneak out the window? <laughs> because they wouldn't let. They had teachers at the doors because there were lots of kids that didn't want to go. <laughs> How in the world did you get out the window? <laughs> <laughs> One of our bathrooms had a sliding window. Oh, we... in the bathroom? Yeah. Hmm. I was just seeing you climbing up like <laughs> in the gymnasium. Stack of kids climbing up the window. <laughs> Can't believe those... I fell for Muppet Man. <laughs> Where are those guys going? <laughs> big fans. Big, big fans. <laughs> when, when I was in school, uh, I went to the sporting events, but it was because I was the photographer taking photos, so... That was kind of the only reason. I wasn't really interested in sports. I'm sorry for those of you who thought I was there to support you. I was. That was there, you know, to take pictures. But I just never been a sports guy. Not if they would have paid me, I probably would have stayed. Well, I never got paid to take the photos. <laughs> I just... <laughs> anyway, let's move on. You know, it's true. These guys got paid to go to sporting events and art exhibits and all of that. And you know, it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. 
The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. This guy had a good plan, I gotta say. uh, Jack William Pacheo has more copies of this week's edition of the Couchilla News than he'll ever need. The Couchilla, California resident went around town Wednesday buying up every copy he could get to prevent word from getting getting out about his arrest for alleged methamphetamine possession. The story of his arrest was on the front page of Wednesday's paper. He went out and bought five to 600 copies of the Couchilla News from newspapers' offices, gas stations, convenience stores, Operated news racks everywhere he could go. More than 500 copies, though, were printed the following day. <laughs> so even though he went around and bought up all the stories, they ran the story again and they put it out because they thought, we're going to get the word out on ah. this. Now it's it's also a story that he was trying to not let the story out about the drug thing. So it was a good plan. Yeah, it was. Maybe you yeah. shouldn't do drugs. That'd probably be a better plan. Kids, that's what happens when your brain is on drugs. Got a moment of duh here. Sometimes actors and actresses can be, you know, a little full of themselves. And when they don't get the the part that they wanted, they they can blame everybody but themselves. And that's what happened with an actress in the United Kingdom. She's upset. The leading opera company did not cast her in the role of the blushing teenage daughter. It's a virgin in this uh, Gilbert and Sullivan musical, The Pirates of Penzance, Penzance, whatever that is. She was so upset that she didn't get the part of the virgin daughter that she sued the opera company. The opera company is sticking to their guns. They feel they made the right decision on this one. You know why? They didn't think that the, she would be very convincing as a virgin, considering <laughs> she's six months pregnant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe you should have tried out for wow. a different role. Yeah. Yeah. Can only imagine how that's going to go in court. I can. I can totally see their point there. Yeah. I'm like, well, I just they don't had a good think, point. Just don't think you're the right one for this part. You know, considering, you know, you're with child right now, <laughs> and this is supposed to be the virgin daughter. Yeah, let's let's not yeah. do that. All right, coming up, we've got your Scoop of the Day that is on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now your Scoop of the Day. Doctors in India have replaced a 12-year-old boy's damaged nose with a new one. But they had to grow the nose on his forehead, though. The boy's nose was badly damaged and disfigured when he suffered from pneumonia as a baby. More than a decade later, a team of surgeons moved the 12-year-old's new nose from his forehead to where his deformed and damaged nose had been, where, you know, most people have it between their eyes and down a little lower. How do you grow a nose on a forehead? The process of growing the nose took about a year. I don't know. They had to put it somewhere. I think that's better there than other places. I would think they could places. put it like on his shoulder or something where he can cover it up with a shirt. He probably put his bangs over it. I'm thinking I have no idea. I don't know. That's just I don't awful. Know. I don't know. Moving right along. A minor league baseball team in New Jersey will celebrate this weekend. Uh, they're celebrating cats during a special Catterday game. Featuring oh, limited Lord. edition uniforms, the Lakewood Blue oh Claws <laughs> announced that the team will wear special uniforms featuring several pictures of cats for their Saturday <laughs> game this weekend. The cat-themed jerseys will be auctioned off to benefit the Blue Claws charity. I've got a photo of these fabulous <laughs> feline jerseys. It's so funny. you got to see it. Oh Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. When I say Mark Hamill, what do you think of? I think of Star Wars. And... He's he's been in Star Wars. He's you know that's kind of what he's known for. He's been in other stuff too, but I guess he tweeted, and I don't think he was supposed to because the cat is out of the bag. They're going to wrap the filming on Friday, July twenty second. They'll be done filming the next episode, episode eight. So it sounds like he's in a little bit of trouble for tweeting that. I don't think he was supposed to. So many people have been stealing. Oh, who cares if they're done? They're done. What difference does it make? But they're still. They don't want people to know this is like top secret stuff. Why? I don't know. Let's move it's on. not like he said, this is what's going to happen. No. This is what we're doing. He just said we're done. I guess. Could be. Relax, people. It's a movie. I don't want to relax too much, though, because 
People, for whatever reason, are stealing incontinence pads. That's adult diapers. There's a store in Scotland. They have to fit them with theft alarms. I could see that because that's an embarrassing purchase. Each tag has a special siren which goes off. Somebody tries to steal them without paying. So it would be yeah. even more embarrassing getting caught trying to steal them than it would be to buy them. Yeah. So, yeah, don't do that. A growing great white shark population along the East Coast has officials, researchers, officials and researchers turning to responses both high tech and low tech to ensure the safety of millions of beachgoers this summer. I struggled through that first line. Let's hope we get the rest of the story better. On Cape Cod, Massachusetts, new warning flags and signs are cropping up at some of the coastline's most popular beaches, and local shark research nonprofit is developing developing a shark tra- <laughs> a shark <laughs> tracking app for the entire eastern seaboard. Meanwhile, researchers at Duke University and the University of North Carolina are testing shark-seeking drones in a specific study that may one day give beach lifeguards a new eye in the sky when it comes to tracking down sharks. Hmm. So that's kind of cool. I just watched Shark Tank the other day, different kind of sharks, but there was a lady on there that has a swimming suit that scares sharks away because of the way that the swimming suit is designed. It's the one thing sharks are afraid of, and it looks like that in the water. So everybody should just wear one of those. She didn't even get a deal with one of the real sharks either. How crazy is that? Well, probably because she didn't have any research to prove. Yeah, that she'd only actually... been around for like a month, I think is what it was. <laughs> yeah. The newest trend uh, is caffeine-infused gummies, a thing called Go Cubes. We've talked about these. They're gummy candies. We talked about it when they first came up with this idea. Well, now they're out. They're made with real coffee. They come in assorted flavors like Pure Drip, Mocha, and a Latte. I'd rather have my coffee. Yeah, me too. Could being in good financial shape mean that you're better in physical shape as well? Back in the 90s, the federal government tried an unusual social experiment. They offered thousands of poor women in big cities public housing. Uh, They offered them a chance to live in a more affluent neighborhood. A decade later, the women who relocated had lower rates of diabetes and extreme obesity, differences, uh, differences that are being hailed as compelling evidence that where you live can determine your health. So there you go. Heidi, we need to, it's not that we're out of shape. We just need to live in a better neighborhood. That's all. We live in a very nice neighborhood, but that's the first thing that we said, isn't it? We got to start walking. Everybody else around here looks like they're in way better health than us. You're going to have to maybe step it up. So notch. I actually agree with here that study. Go. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show this weekend. John and Heidi. This has been quite an election so far, and we've got a long ways to go. Stay informed at politicalstorm.com. It's a cool site with political news and information on the campaigns, plus a place to chime in and have a say in what you think. If you're into politics, you need to check out politicalstorm.com. Get informed from several different sources all in one place. Listen to podcasts like mine and learn about current election topics, read fun editorials, and engage your brain. It's your country. It's your vote. It's your voice. Politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Time now for your second scoop. That's one of my favorite things about the weekend edition of the John and Heidi Show. More time to squeeze in more fun stories like this one. Two British Columbia men face criminal charges linked to a video post showing them ride a moose as it swam across the lake. Oh. <laughs> Those crazy Canadians. <laughs> why, why are they in trouble? Well, you're not supposed to ride a moose. Why can't you ride a moose? Because what happens when the moose pummels you? Well, then that's your own stupid yeah, fault. Yeah, it is your own stupid fault, but that's what will happen. Then they're going to have to call the Mounties, and they're going to have to try to come and scrape them off the ground. Hey, most people agree that selfie sticks are annoying, but there actually is a pretty darn cool selfie. i got to give this guy some credit. The humble invention has been redeemed by a fantastic photograph of a guy getting a selfie with a sloth. Yeah. I've got his uh, photo on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Sloths are typically shy, so getting a photo with a sloth is very rare. The sloth was up in a tree. He used the selfie stick to take a photo of the sloth, and then you can see him underneath, and it looks like the sloth is leaning back and smiling. It's actually pretty darn cool. Hmm. I've I like never, sloths. I've never said a selfie was cool in my life, so that's the first. A man shot himself in the groin during a robbery <laughs> attempt outside of a gas station. He approached a vehicle and attempted to rob the people on the inside. He tried to pull a gun from his waistband. And oh, it got my stuck, gosh. And it shot him right in the old One mind. idiot. So, yeah. Speaking of idiots, a drunken man in Nashville stole a mannequin from a lingerie store and was arrested at home in bed with the mannequin. Hopefully they were okay. just sleeping. I'm not sure what was going on. <laughs> this dude really likes mannequins. <laughs> I remember watching that movie in the 80s. When are you going to come to life? Yeah, come on, baby. Wake up. 
Apple is going to make it easier than ever to register as an organ donor. This is a cool idea. With the re- release of the iOS 10 later this year, you'll be able to use your iPhone or iPad for the National Organ Donor Registry through an, an, a health app. This is a cool idea. Registrations will be sent to the National Donate Life Registry. So I think that's a, a step in the right direction for people who want to donate. When a Melbourne, Australia woman went into labor early, the dad-to-be ordered an Uber to take them to the hospital rather than wait for an ambulance. The new mom said Uber app allowed them to see just how far away her driver was compared to not knowing how long she might have to wait for an ambulance to arrive. The woman praised the Uber driver for being overcautious and driving slow to the hospital. So maybe we need to have Uber ambulances. Huh? Mm. Can you order an ambulance on Uber? <laughs> I've never used Uber. If you have used it, you have to let me know if, that, if it's, it's cool. I don't know. Women are more attracted to men who surround themselves with other attractive women. I think this is true. A study from Texas Christian University shows the presence of these other women give men a halo effect, Mm -hmm. which confirms that he's suitably dating material. They need to look no further. The effect is known as the mate choice copying in the animal kingdom. So all they have to do is look at the animal kingdom and they'll see this is exactly what happens there. I could see that. So if you hang out with good-looking chicks, chances are you're going to end up with a a, a better female, whatever you call it. Companion. There you go. That's the thing. I I don't know. I've been out of the dating scene a while. I don't know the terms. (laughs) So what we need to do with our single son, wink, wink, anybody listening, is uh, have him hang out with a bunch of good-looking chicks. Instead of all those, you know, guys that he hangs out with, that's not going to help him, is it? Hey, a Northern Ireland jockey was kicked in the face during a race in Italy. He was knocked out, and that's not even the worst part. They called an ambulance. When the vehicle raced onto the track, the ambulance drove over him and broke his leg. Oh, my gosh. So he got kicked in the face by a horse, and then he got run over by the ambulance that was coming to get him. This guy did not have a good day. A study published recently reveals that researchers at a facility in San Diego once had a whale that could imitate human speech. So if you'd say something to it, the whale would repeat that back. That's cool. He would mimic you. It's a mimicking whale. I think that's really cool. Scientists think they figured out a way for people to feel happier, but applying it in real life might be a little weird. It involves getting a whiff of a person's armpit. Yeah. Oh, you got to find a happy just person. Disgusting. And then sniff the happy person's armpit. I'm oh, happy. Come on over here, Heidi. No way. <laughs> yeah, I got my arm up. <laughs> See if it Gross. works. Does it make you happy? It's disgusting. It seems we happy humans create a chemical in our sweat that reflect our emotional states. People who happen to get a sniff pick up on the vibes. In the experiment, Dutch researchers had men watch happy Scary and neutral videos with absorbent pads on their pits. <laughs> Afterwards, they had women sniff the pads, keeping a close oh. eye on their facial movements. Sure enough, when they sniffed the fear pad, muscles associated expressions of fear. The same applied to the happy pads. So they sniffed that one and were like, oh, wow. That one makes me happy. <laughs> no way. You people I'm are- sorry, but there's just no way. That's disgusting. <laughs> I don't, they get a government grant for that. I'm sure of it. <laughs> like, okay, here's my idea. <laughs> I'm going to watch a bunch of movies. We're going to sweat all over these pads and have women sniff them. Sick. Yeah. I'm going to get a grant for that. Okay. It's going to do it for your second scoop. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Do you buy lottery tickets? Maybe you wait till the jackpot is big, then you buy one. I was like that too. Like my odds get better because the jackpot was more. Well, I think I found something that actually will give me a better chance to win. It's called Lotto-licious. I learned about this from Richard Lustig. He literally wrote the book on how to win the lottery, and he should know. He's a seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Richard plays and endorses Lotto-licious, and I just signed up too. I'd love it if you join Richard and I. You can play Powerball and Mega Millions without even going to the store. Sign up right now at RadioLottoPool.com. John and Heidi. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? 96% of people put the peanut butter on first when making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. What's wrong with the other 4%? Who would start with the jelly? That would be a jelly peanut butter sandwich. Not a peanut you butter. You always and jelly start sandwich. with peanut butter. Yeah, 96% of the people do. Yeah. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? California has issued six driver's licenses to people named Jesus Christ. If they carpool, do you think they would all go in one accord? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's so lame. Uh, hey, in, 19, <laughs> sorry. in 1980, a Las Vegas hospital suspended workers for betting on when patients would die. 
<laughs> happened in 1980 in Vegas. You know what? That's the sort of thing I would take part in. <laughs> like, I bet he's going to go at 10, 15, yeah. 10, 14. You're in there unplugging the cord. <laughs> that's probably that's the sort why of thing they, I, I would take part I'm in. I'm pretty sure that's why they made him quit doing that. In, mm. in Utah, it's illegal to swear in front of a dead person. Your whole family would be banned for humans. <laughs> Uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, Jeff? Salt Lake City, Utah, has a law against carrying an unwrapped ukulele on the street. <laughs> Not sure why. Okay. And the final fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Arizona was the last state to join the union of the 48 lower states. Hmm. So they were the last one to join us. So there you go. A couple of fun facts for you this weekend. Whether you're an experienced shooter or someone new to self-defense, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute has a course for you. You may recognize Front Sight from their reality TV show filmed at this private range 45 minutes west of Las Vegas. A Diamond Lifetime membership is $15,000, but we have a special price of just $3,000 available now only at radiosavings.com. This lifetime membership allows you to take over 50 courses as often as you'd like at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. Get this deal right now at radiosavings.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi show this weekend. It was kind of an interesting week for us because our daughter was gone for a few days. And, and we was. got to just hang out, just the two of us. And we went kind of on some little dates and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, not like real exciting kind of dates. But one no. was, you know, with, with friends. Another was by ourselves. And actually, it was with our son. So we didn't do anything on our own, did we? <laughs> so, no, we didn't. <laughs> anyway, it's been a while since we've really been in the dating world. But I have some tips for you here. Girls, this is how you know when you are on a bad date. If you order a double Whopper and he says, hey, my name ain't Rockefeller, honey, yeah, you're probably on, a, <laughs> probably on a bad date. If you've never heard someone speak with such passion about an ant farm, chances are your date's not going to go yeah. well. If your dinner reservations are under loser, party of two. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that might be the start of a very fun date because that guy has a sense of humor. If he's especially proud of how long he can sustain a burp. <laughs> hey, watch this. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah, it's time <laughs> to go home. Calls to tell you he'll pick you up as soon as the standoff with the police is over. <laughs> You're in for a treat. <laughs> if he's been on Judge Judy and Jerry Springer once or twice, yeah, yeah. you might not be. If he picks you up and asks you to try you, try to not get your heels stuck in the spokes. <laughs> <laughs> and if he says, you want to order dessert? Mom says it was okay to spend my entire allowance this week. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ladies. Now, men, here's how you know if you're on a bad date. You catch her giving her number to a guy cleaning the windshield. <laughs> if she keeps calling you bachelor number two. <laughs> if she says, whoa, it's 7.15 already. <laughs> it's time for me to go. If she transitions the conversation by saying, well, that's enough about me. What do you think about me? <laughs> uh, if she comments, my last boyfriend is there on the mantle in the urn. <laughs> <laughs> if she challenges you to arm wrestling and calls you little fella. Yeah, that might be a, might be a bad thing. And if she lunges at you several times with her spork, yeah, you could be having a, a rough day right there. So a <laughs> couple of signs you're having a bad date. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Hey, this is Tim from Hope and Faith Machine Works. Are you having one of these days? How in the world am I going to do that? Or even, if I could just have this... My life would be so much easier. Well, this kind of stuff is my specialty. At Hope and Faith Machine Works, we work with anyone who needs something built, fabricated, or just done right. We've done medical, industrial, PLC, and prototype designs. You can reach us at yourhopeourfaith.com. That's yourhopeourfaith.com. This next story actually is kind of funny. It kind of cracks me up because the, the dude was just doing his job. A janitor at a Washington State High School, got a little carried away cleaning. The maintenance man at Ferris High School in Spokane wiped away a wall of graffiti, but the problem is it wasn't graffiti. It was an art project dedicated to the graduating class. Don Hunter spent 60 hours painting a mural. Uh, The janitor walked in and thought he was doing his job. He cleaned it up and erased the mural. Manager of the Spokane District says... They apologized for the mistake. They offered her a sheet of wood on which she could redo the artwork. The school has offered to hang that in the senior hall, complete with a plaque. Hunter is taking the mistake in stride. She says, I feel this is going to be a positive message for kids. Bad things happen in life, but you keep on going. You can't give up. Hmm. So at least she didn't get upset. Yeah, well, there's not much you can do. What's done is done. She was drawing on the wall which was what she was hired to do and right. the janitor cleaned it off which is what he was hired right. to do they should have maybe had some sort of communication communication there. with the staff would be good <laughs> fixed a whole lot of yeah. stuff coming up we're going to head to norway to see what those crazy norwegians are up to that's on the way
This is an interesting thing. I actually heard about this maybe a week ago. The latest fashion trend with the teens in Norway is wearing airline equipment. Teenagers in Norway are stealing airline airplane equipment. seat belts. What? To keep up their baggy pants. Thieves are able to uncouple two parts of a belt from a seat without tools. That could, right there, could maybe concern me if I was going to be flying on an airplane where I can unhook the seat belt. How safe is that? Couldn't be safe. They're unable to un- undo these things without tools and then join the parts together behind their back. Oh, my god! And gosh. then they click the thing in front to... Why uh, would wear... you want to wear them? They're hideous. Uh, Brave and Airways say they're trying to find ways to fix the belts a little more securely. An average of five belts a day are stolen. Oh they operate gosh. on domestic routes, and they've got about 400 flights a day. They cannot easily trace the belt thieves because they do not allocate seats to a certain person on a flight. So oh, even so if they did, I could steal you your seat belt. And, yeah. you know. Anyway, crazy kids in Norway stealing... Seat belts out of airplanes, you know. It's probably not a good plan. Kids, don't do that. Coming up, we're going to talk about supermarkets. They're on the way. John and Heidi. This has been quite an election so far, and we've got a long ways to go. Stay informed at politicalstorm.com. It's a cool site with political news and information on the campaigns, plus a place to chime in and have a say in what you think. If you're into politics, you need to check out politicalstorm.com. Get informed from several different sources all in one place. Listen to podcasts like mine and learn about current election topics, read fun editorials, and engage your brain. It's your country. It's your vote. It's your voice. Politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Uh, I have had a lot of different jobs in my lifetime. I've done a lot of different things. I've shoveled pig manure on a farm. I've I worked at a car wash. I worked at a little laundromat. I guess I was attached to the car wash. Worked at restaurants. But one of the things that I did was worked at a grocery store, carrying out groceries and stocking the shelves. Yes. I've got a list here. It says how supermarkets are set up to make you spend more money. I don't know if I agree with this, but I'm going to tell you what they say. From MSN.com, they say, Food companies pay a small fortune to supermarkets for prime display space. I'm going to just stop and say, the one I worked at, we didn't get paid to put things in places. (laughs) If we did, I didn't know that because I put it it wherever I had room. So maybe that was just the place I worked. Uh, Back to this. They say, uh, including eye-level shelves and end caps Mm -hmm. or displays at the end of the aisle. They pay extra to be there, they say. If you want to save money, check out the higher and lower shelves for less pricey items. I and always store. do. I know this. I already know this. And store brand items. Also, concentrate your spending around the perimeter of the store where the basis of the, of the items there, most of what you're going to find are produce, dairy, and meat. The interior features the stuff that's more profitable, uh, profitable including highly processed and convenient items, according to MSN. So they're saying if you buy mainly produce and meat and dairy, you're going to save more money. Yeah. Isn't that the more expensive stuff, though? It is more expensive, but there's more not nutritious. as much of a profit, and, uh, and it's more it's more nutritious for you. So. Well, there you go. I see that makes sense then. <clears throat> that's that's where I was disagreeing because I was thinking that uh, usually that's where you spend the bulk of your budget is right. on those things. Because you can get, you know, like a... Ramen noodles are like 10 cents. <laughs> <laughs> we have not had those in a long time. That's, and I'm fine with that. I don't oh, care man, for ramen I, noodles. I really do. I think feel like good. I'm eating a bowl full of maggots. They're oh, disgusting. Heidi. Hey, we're on the radio. People could try to be eating right now or something. <laughs> they could be eating ramen noodles. They probably are. And now you're gonna, we just lost a fan because of you. Way to go. Anyway, coming up, we got some good news to share. That is on the way on the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. We always try to wrap things up around here with some good news, and I think we've got some good news here. Uh, this is actually good news that we're sharing on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show, and it happens to be about Facebook, believe it or not. All right. They just made it a lot easier for users to raise money for the causes they really care about. Several months after the social network launched a new fundraiser feature for nonprofits to collect donations, now Facebook announced They've expanded the tool to individual users. 
Starting this week, some users in the U.S. can create dedicated fundraiser pages to raise money for verified nonprofits. The tool is currently available to about 1% of the U.S. users standard for a new Facebook product in order to gather feedback and make sure there aren't any bugs. But they plan to roll it out for all U.S. users in the coming weeks. So before you know it, you might be able to help raise money for your favorite charity right there on your Facebook page. Hmm. I think I'm going to do one. Uh, it's, I'm going to see if I can raise some money for underprivileged uh, radio announcers. <laughs> we could certainly use it. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I wouldn't do that. But I do think it's really a cool idea. And I know there are a lot of people that I'm friends with on Facebook that share charity things, the things that they're involved in. And we do that. We've got events that we put on and, and, and help uh, with fundraisers. And I've shared that yes, on Facebook. Do. So it's kind of neat that now you'll be able to actually find a way to have people who say, well, I can't go to the event, but yeah, I'll click right here and make a little donation. So mm -hmm. it's a neat idea. Nice. So Facebook, way to be using your little noggin there and thinking up new ways to help people. All right. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. If you'd like to know more on that story or catch out anything that we're up to on our uh, Facebook page, it is very easy to find. Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Thanks for listening to the Weekend Edition.